Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm the host of the Women's Wellness Podcast where our goal is to empower women to make informed decisions and choices about their health, life and family. And today I am excited to introduce Jen Dugard who is the founder of the Body Beyond Baby brand and creator of a fitness professional education system called Safe Return to Exercise. She's also the author of the book, How to Love Your Body As Much As Your Baby, which is something I didn't know and quite (laughs) have to look that up and get that myself. Um, Jen has over 14 years experience within the fitness industry in a range of roles from personal trainer, outdoor group fitness um, business owner, mentor, educator, and presenter. So a lot of strings on her bow and her personal mission is to raise the standard of the fitness industry through education and collaboration and has been executing this for many years within the pre and postnatal space. Positioning herself as a specialist in both, both in working with women and training the trainers that work with women. And she's a huge advocate of strengthening the relationship between the fitness industry, allied health and medical industry, which I had to, I couldn't pick one thing from this list that she gave me because everything <laughs> is just so important. And Jen also shares her knowledge and experience by regularly presenting at key industry conferences, including Phylex in Australia, Expro in Singapore, and Fitex in New Zealand, which is where we met. We did. And she regularly, regularly writes for What's New in Fitness and Women's Health Australia. So with that much knowledge behind her i am proud to introduce jen dugard welcome thank you amy i've got to live up to all of that now don't i <laughs> you do no pressure no pressure no. yeah thank you for inviting me it's a pleasure thank you for coming um so the reason i asked you onto the podcast today was because um late last year or start of summer last year i noticed Uh, a bit of a movement that was going on called no more pre-baby body pressure. Mm -hmm. And a few of my friends over here and colleagues in the industry um, are affiliates of yours and through the safe return to exercise system. And I was noticing these pictures and thinking, wow, this is really good. And I just wanted to know how that came about. How did that come about? It's interesting now you ask that because I'm like, how did that come about? <laughs> and especially in the way that it was done. So, um, so the Body Beyond Baby affiliate team, so just to give people a bit of context, is a, um, I guess, a community or a, a group of fitness professionals that all specialize in working with mums. Um, and we all believe in safely returning mums to exercise after having a baby and also um, helping to get rid of the body image pressure that women feel after they've had a baby. So we have like this two kind of pronged approach. One is the technical side of things and the real education. And the other is the body image and um, helping mums to understand that it's normal to feel and look different after having a baby. And it doesn't mean that you're any more or less of a person because of that. Um, So what we, what we hear as personal trainers all the time is that, you know, clients come in and they say, I want to get my pre-baby body back. And that's their, that's their goal. And that's their kind of mission. Um, And we kind of all went, we want to help mums to, we just want to stamp out that language across the fitness industry altogether. So Mm. it was no more pre-baby body with a, was the hashtag that we came up with. Um, Whether we got that hundred percent right or wrong, I'm not, not sure. Um, And then over time, this kind of idea of, um, so the, the photographs you were talking about, Amy, were um, a bunch of women in their underwear with their no more pre-baby, pre-baby body statement or their, you know, their personal experience. And um, we get together once a year as part of the team and go on a retreat, which is a two-day two day weekend. Um, and we decided that that weekend we were going to do a photo shoot of us all in our bikinis, not, not even bikinis, in our underwear <laughs> um, with this no more pre-baby body message. So the, the concept 
it was probably, I think it was probably my idea. And I went to the team as, as often happens. And I kind of go, Hey, I've got this idea. What do you think? Um, and there was a lot of backwards and forwards and a lot of people stirred up a lot of confidence issues with the team ourselves. So were we willing to stand in our underwear with this message? Um, mm. You know, when we even got to, we had months and months of planning and, um, then we got to the actual weekend itself where we'd organized a photographer and it's, we were going to do our professional shots in our branded clothing and then our underwear shots. And there was tears and there was, are we doing the right oh thing? Gosh. And there was all of this kind of stuff, which um, came up amongst a group of women who generally are fit and healthy and they're the personal trainers themselves. But it just goes mm -hmm. to show that what we were standing for was something that every single woman experiences or I can't say every single woman, but the, a majority of women, no matter what body that you're in, whether your body is a bigger body, whether it's a smaller body, whether other people see you as being appearing fit um, yeah. and health, like, you know, you, you, some of the feedback that we got was there wasn't enough diversity in the images that we put out into the world. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys don't look like you should be sharing this message with the world because you guys all look like you've got your pre-baby body back. Um, but on the inside, it was all a group of women that actually took a lot of courage um, to actually go out there and say that. And, you know, we didn't look at the diversity and we didn't try and get a woman of every color or every race or every size or any of that kind of stuff. We just went, this is who we are. Um, mm. And we're the ones that when we want to create this movement, therefore we have to be leaders in that. And then we turned it outwards to ask other women to share their no more pre baby body message in order to gain that diversity. So it was quite a interesting experience from the conception to the, um, to putting out, out into the world and what the journeys that each of the women that stood out there and did that first had to go through themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's empowering, not only, not only for the women who the personal trainers are helping, but for the personal trainers as well, there can be a lot of, I don't want to say stigma, but an expectation that a personal trainer, because you're fit, you should be this particular type of person who is lean with a six pack and it showed that everybody is, has a range mm. of body types and you can be fit no matter what your body looks like you can still have that level of fitness and still help people to improve themselves absolutely and even deeper than that amy it was the you know, the, the way that other people, so the big thing that I took away from it is it's people judge through their own lens of, and their experience of life. So when we were getting comments of, um, yeah, it's a great message, but you guys all look like you've got your pre-baby body back and you shouldn't be standing for this message. It's like, well, what body type can stand for that message then? Is it, mm. we could only stand for that message if we're in a larger body or we can, we don't have those feelings of insecurity if we have what other people perceive as a, uh, the body type that we should all aspire to. So it was, it was very, very interesting in, you know, then we question ourselves and go, maybe we shouldn't be standing for this because we don't, we didn't have a diverse, you know, yeah. number of people in front of us. But at the end of the day, we came back to, it was just us. That's who we are. We can't do anything about who we are, what we look like. We're all white females. We're all, you know, and it's, it was, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lack of diversity in, in many ways, but we were just who we were and we had a message. So we put it out there and that was it. <laughs> well, that's it. And it, it just invites people. If you want more diversity and you're inviting people to join that conversation, exactly join in. And that's what we said. If you don't see yourself there, please be the person who stands up and puts yourself there. And we, you know, we had the hashtag that meant we could search the people that were being brave enough to put themselves out there. And we shared lots of different body types um, in the weeks that followed the, the original kind of post. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what was the positive response that you got from that? So you've had people saying there's, there wasn't much diversity, but what was the positive response that came from I think, as well. I think because everybody shared their journey, not just their image. Um, and the people that took time to kind of read everybody's personal story. So, you know, even the, the person that might, you know, in society's gay like level look, look the best had her own journey of, um, you know, whether it's personal, 
like torture is the wrong word, but personal um, mm. upset and, and challenges going through her own body journey. And I think the, the big positives where women started to go, you know, we're not alone was one, um, you know, stories, people were resonating with other stories um, and really starting to move into that questioning why we think we need to get a pre-baby body back. Is it, what is that? Is it the fact that we think that we're loved more when we're smaller? Is it the fact that we think that we're valued more when our bodies are, are leaner? Um, if we, we've had a baby and our body has changed, what is the, do we want to get that body back because we think that our husband finds us more attractive when we're leaner and then if they do then our relationship is better and then you can go deeper and deeper down that and for most women it's actually a um, a journey of self-love that they need to go through and we've externalized it a lot by deciding that it's about we will be loved more or accepted more or valued more if our body looks a certain way. So, you know, we try and fix all of these external problems that might come from after having a baby or as, as women. Um, and we, hopefully we can then go on that journey of, you know, we, our worth is not our body shape or our body size and our partners don't love us for that. And our friends don't love us more if we're smaller and, you know, mm. all of that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, whether people, embrace the way that we went about the messaging or not i think the fact that we were brave enough to start a conversation and brave enough to do it in a way that people took notice of is a is a hugely valuable outcome yeah yeah and hearing the journeys that everybody's been on helps to make it more relatable they're yeah. not you're not just that image on the screen you're you're so much more than that and that goes back to the person looking in the mirror you're so much more than that person you're seeing in front of you and learning, learning how to embrace that journey and how to, yeah, get on that self love. Yeah. I mean, journey. are we even the image? Like, are we the yeah. image or are we, we need to, you know, this is just the body that we happen to be in, but mm. are you your body? I don't know. We could go really deep into this. Oh yeah. We could go on this kind of existential <laughs> We totally tangent. could. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. So going back to, um, exercise and, because that's that's what we do yeah um what what tips can we give to mums especially new mums say they're on their first baby and mm -hmm. they were used to working out a certain way living life a certain way looking a certain way and now they've gained kgs their tummy's softer they've got stretch marks and they they want to go back to doing what they used to but they just don't know how to start or yeah, what, what tips could we give to women to ease themselves into that journey again without hurting themselves? I suppose. Without hurting themselves. Yeah, it's a good, good question. Yeah. Um, I think one of the key things I, I heard you say in that was how do we get them to go back? So I think mm -hmm. that, and I know that you would know this straight away, so yeah. I'm just bringing it to other people's attention more than yours, but I think that we need to move along the journey of, what is next for me rather than I must go back to what I was doing. So, you know, it may very well be that in the next part of your physical exercise journey, you are able to do some of the things that you were able to do before. And I've seen many women have babies and go on to be stronger and fitter than they've ever been before um, because they've chosen to do it in a specific, very self-aware and body aware way. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest starting point and the biggest tip for any woman that's had a baby is don't try and go back anywhere. You've, you've birthed, you've given, you've been pregnant, you've birthed a baby, you're on a new journey. It's about continuing your journey rather than going back nothing that you could do before is better or should be judged in any you know better way than what you're going to do moving forward so even just that flip of language of, i don't want to get my body back i don't need to get my strength back it's like i'm going to move into the body that i am now and i'm going to move into the exercise that i can do and it might be for some women that the exercise that they did before having a baby will never feel right again um, but also again, some women will go on to do way more than they've ever done before. And there is research out there. I couldn't name it, but to say women in their thirties that have had babies have a higher pain threshold, therefore are able to become better athletes than 
women beforehand, which is makes total sense. And you see comebacks, you see tennis players that come back, you see athletes that come back and they come back yeah. stronger and they come back fitter and they come back. And again, I'm saying come back, but they, <laughs> you know, cause, cause we're trained to come back. Right. Mm. Um, I guess the second tip I would say is that you need to learn your body again. So the body that you've been used to living in prior to having a baby has changed. You know, it's grown a baby, it's birthed a baby. We need to get to know and understand your body from the inside out. Um, in an ideal world, we've done that during pregnancy and we've prepared ourselves. So we've taken pregnancy as the off season and we've done all of those, you know, pelvic floor TA strengthening exercises in pregnancy and then moved back into far out it's like it's hard the words right it's like it's, you move it's back ingrained into <laughs> it's ingrained into us yeah it is um so you move into a higher level of exercise postnatally when you feel ready but if you're someone that's never never been aware of pelvic floor prior to having a baby never understood transverse abdominis never even heard the words um build from the inside out or strengthen from the inside out that's where we need to start so we need to become familiar with our body on an internal level in order to then build rebuild yeah and what are the steps that women could do because i know a lot of a lot of women take they'll they'll have the baby they'll prepare they'll look after themselves while they're pregnant and then they'll have the baby and they'll go to their midwife or their doctor at six weeks and the doctor will go okay yep you're free to go back to back to <laughs> yeah. exercise it's like put money in the in the swear jar yeah right. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're free to return to exercise. Yep. What does that mean for women when they've, when they've had that checkup at six weeks and the doctor said, yep, you can go carry on. So I run a, um, a webinar called why her six week checkup is not enough and the questions you should be asking. And that's for personal trainers, but you can also flip it on its head to women themselves and go, why your six week checkup's not enough. And the questions mm. you should be asking of either yourself, the facility that you're moving back into or the personal trainer that you're going to be working with. So um, what we need everyone to understand medical professionals, fitness professionals, women themselves, is that, is that your six week checkup is not a tick of approval to go mm -hmm. back into the exercise that you were doing prior to becoming pregnant. Um, what we need to know is where your body is at right now. And for me, that doesn't even start with the physical side of your body. That starts with understanding your birth story. Yes. So a lot of women will leave the hospital or leave whatever birth situation that they, they were in. Um, they'll know, you know, let's say birth didn't go to plan, whatever that means. Um, mm -hmm. And something happened that they didn't expect but it all happened so quickly. They were not in that, that, you know, when you're having a baby, your brain is not functioning in the way it is. You might have an awareness of what's going on, but you might not completely understand what's happening to you. Things can happen really quickly. They can happen really suddenly. Decisions are made. Um, and you might be forced to make decisions that, you know, you, you, you wouldn't normally make that at that speed. So you leave with a baby and the concept is you've got your baby, you're healthy, you've le you leave the hospital and you should, you should be grateful for that. But what we miss is this big understanding of all the things that happened during that labor experience that could leave a woman going, yeah, I've got a baby, but either emotionally or physically, I don't feel as I did, or I don't feel right. And I don't quite under know how to explain that to anyone or even what happened to me. So mm -hmm. going back to their carer, um, if that's you and you're questioning what happened during your birth experience, go back to your carer and ask for some, for a debrief on what happened. Um, you know, in, in Australia, we have a blue book or in New South Wales, we have a blue book that writes down what happened. Often that's not very, um, might not be very thorough, but it might give you an idea of, you know, I had an episiotomy, I had, you know, syntocin, the, you know, the, 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 um, uh, syntocin is the, speeds up contraction like it's a synthetic drug to speed oh, yeah. up like to make contractions um stronger um you know all this stuff that you might not you know i had an emergency c-section why did i end up with an emergency c-section mm. so i think that from an emotional and physical perspective number one is understanding your birth story and if you don't understand it go get support and then once you've found out if you feel like you're not able to um process what happened then look for other support, whether it's a counselor or continuing to talk to your GP or whoever it is in order to get to a place where there's an acceptance and an understanding before you move back into your physical journey. 
that would be number one. I'm going to let you talk for a second. Yeah. No, I'm just gone. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking how important it is. I mean, I know I mentioned right at the start how you advocate collaboration within allied health professionals, the fitness mm. industry and the medical industry. Um, how important it is to have those connections as a personal trainer to be able to access, say, their records to go, right, they had this happen and then maybe going, okay, that's a bit much for me to help you. Can yeah. I refer you on to a woman's health physiotherapist or a gynecologist or somebody else who can help before bringing you to me and helping you with that journey? Yeah, I think it's important for us as personal trainers to understand our scope of practice and it's, mm. we get to start conversations, but we need, we, we can open boxes and start conversations. But like you said, we need to have the contacts and the partners within our, within our kind of network in order to be able to fulfill that conversation. So there's no point in starting a conversation and saying, you know, what happened in your birth story? You start to dig up all this stuff for a woman. We're not actually qualified to no. um, counsel that. We're not qualified to diagnose anything. We're not, we shouldn't be open something we can't fulfill or help her to to fix fix is the wrong word but so it's it's important that you know it's do you understand your birth story well not really okay that could be as much questioning or you know what happened you know why that happened and then okay well i feel like maybe you should go back to your carer um and mm. if they can't go back to their carer who are the the counselors or the people that we within our field are referring to and then i think it's a women's health physio so it's it's the 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 medical professional that helps her to understand what happened. And then we need to go to a women's health physio um, in order to understand her body right now and what's happening. So I guess if people don't understand what a women's health physio is, I'm sure they do if they've been listening to your podcast. <laughs> Amy. Um, but you know, the, the, the eyes on, I refer to a women's health physio as the eyes on the inside. So as personal trainers, we can talk about your pelvic floor. We can even, we can talk to you about helping you to understand how to activate your pelvic floor, but it's a muscle that we can't see and we can't feel. And we can't even know that you're doing the right thing, even with our instruction and, and with touching and feeling. Um, yeah. And even more now, I don't know when this is going to air, but with the COVID-19, like we can't touch and we can't do any of that no. stuff. So we're communicating this stuff over, you know, a computer um, to postnatal women. So it's important that, you know, if physiotherapists are still working, they can see a women's health physio. Um, and if otherwise they're doing things through telehealth where the women's health physio can guide them, whether it's, you know, through that own touch and feel around pelvic floor, um, yeah. you know, and that would be internal touch. So, which again, as personal trainers, we're not diagnosed, we're not, um, it's not within our scope of practice yeah. to, to be doing. <laughs> yeah. And I've spoken to a couple of physios, who are doing like zoom appointments yeah. and get them to, to touch their own body and feel their own body and see, but still it's so tricky in the current climates. Yeah. This will go live in a couple of months. So hopefully we, we can put our hands on people, but as you said, it's out of our scope of practice. The best queuing in the world mm -hmm. can't replace physical measuring yeah. from, from a women's health physio and those internal examinations. Absolutely. And, you know, as we, we know 50% of women, when they think that they're activating pelvic floor, they're actually pushing out. So, yeah. you know, if you're a woman listening to this and you think, yep, I've got my pelvic floor down pat. If you've not been seen by a women's health physio and we don't know, it could be that you're bearing down and, you know, you're doing your pelvic floor exercises when you're feeding or when you're waiting for the kettle or, you know, all of those kind of cliches when you're waiting for the toast or whatever it is yeah. and you're doing pelvic floor exercises. And, and if you're pushing out all of those times, then we could be potentially making a weak pelvic floor weaker. Yeah. Like I would advise like a woman right now is if she's, if she's in a, a situation where she can't get to a women's health physio and I teach my course in Taiwan and there are no women's health physios. So it's like, how do we teach wow. safe return to exercise without constantly saying, go to see a women's health physio. So something as simple as a woman putting her hand externally onto her, like over her vagina and mm. she will, she potentially will feel if it's a large pushing out movement versus a drawing in. So there is that external feedback that you can get, yeah. although it will never um, match what a women's health physio can do. Yeah. Yeah. We're quite lucky where we are in New Zealand and over in Australia to have those networks. 
so lucky, so yeah. lucky. Like it, it takes me and I'm, I'm digressing, but it takes me to, you know, women in third world countries that are giving birth and, and, you know, it's a, it might be what's called a fistula, which is where a woman ripped from front to back. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. doesn't get fixed. And no. it's like, you know, we have women's health physios, so we need to make the most of the amazing, you know, facilities that we've got because we have access to that in our worlds. Mm. Um, yeah. And yeah. it's okay. It's okay. I mean, everyone's, you've already had hands everywhere when you're pregnant, having somebody else check yeah, to make sure I, everything's good. It's okay. I, it is okay. I do think we need to um, understand trauma. Um, yeah. So if someone yeah. has a, a history of trauma, um, whether it's around sexual, like sexual trauma or whether their birth was so traumatic for them that they just don't want someone to touch mm. them. But in that circumstance, I would still say, go to see a women's health physio. They're trained to support you through this. So a good women's health physio is not just going to dive in and, you know, she's going to talk to you about yeah. what happened. And then she will also refer you to, you know, do you need to see a trauma counselor? Do you need to see somebody else to help you with that? So it's um, all about consent. Absolutely. Yeah. And if your body's not functioning in the way that it was, um, then we need to help you. Please don't suffer in silence. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, for a woman that's got no symptoms or thinks that they're completely fine, your women's health physio is that kind of tick of approval to go, you know what, you can potentially progress more quickly than somebody else because yeah. maybe you've been aware of this stuff all through your pregnancy. Maybe you're one of the lucky ones. And I say that with hesitance, yeah. um, you know, and you've, you, you have kind of, um, I want to say bounce back and I don't want to say bounce back, but you've, you've kind of had a baby, your body is in better shape than somebody else's might be at this mm. time. And you may have less work to do, but we as personal trainers and you as a, a woman that wants to exercise in the way that you want to freely move needs to understand what your body's doing, where it's at um, and what it is capable of doing without potentially the potential to cause injury down the track. Yeah. Um, moving on to looking for a personal trainer. Yep. I, um, so I do personal training and I do boot camps and I often have women come and go, oh yeah, I want to return, return to doing boot camp. I want to return to doing yep. this. And it's like, hang on, slow down, do this pre-screen, do this. Have you seen here? And I have, I have check boxes that I do and an in-depth pre-screen, but not every personal trainer has that. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what sort of things should women look for when they're looking for a personal trainer? Yeah, absolutely. This is a really good question because I still think that the education for the women themselves around moving back into exercise is not there. Mm -hmm. um, so key things that if you're looking for a personal trainer right now and you're a mum, and I would say mum of any any age. So, you know, we, we draw people in and we talk about pre and postnatal, but I'd love to yeah. change the language to mum because you could be a... postnatal, always postnatal. Absolutely. Because yeah. you could be a mum with a six-year-old and still experience an incontinence. Um, and the, the downside to that is the fact that when your baby's six, it's either deemed as being normal to you and your friends. Yeah. Um, and you're, no, no trainer's asking you about that anymore. So no one's asking no. you about your pelvic floor. So, um, for mums of any, any age, but especially your new mums, um, asking, you know, when, a, when a, you go to see a trainer, do they even get you to do a medical questionnaire? Number one, if they don't, they're not insured. So for something to go, if something was to go wrong and you've not done a pre-exercise questionnaire um, and then looking at the questions that are on your pre-exercise questionnaire. So the standard pre-exercise questionnaire will have something along the lines of, have you had a baby in the last 12 months? You'll tick yes or no. If you tick yes, have you had your six week checkup? You'll tick yes. They'll go, how do you feel? And you'll say, I feel okay. And then you'll go back, go to doing whatever your body externally can do. And yeah. that'll probably be about the total um, questioning for a trainer that's not um, potentially uh, accredited or trained in working with pregnant and postnatal women and also mums. Um, a trainer that is qualified in working and educated in working with mums will then dive into questions along the lines of what kind of delivery did you have? You know, if you had a vaginal delivery, how long were you pushing for? If you had a C-section, was it an emergency C-section? Was it a planned C-section? How are you healing? Did you have any stitches? Did you have an episiotomy? Have you seen a women's health physio? So, you know, those key questions about the delve into the, the what's and the why's of the birth 
you know, how's your pelvic floor? Have you had any pelvic symptoms of pelvic floor weakness? Then they would know the symptoms of pelvic floor weakness. Then asking, have you seen a women's health physio? So my belief is that every personal trainer that works with a mum should be partnered with a women's health physio. Um, yeah. So if you're really looking for that person that knows what they're doing, or at least knows that they know that they need to send you somewhere else. Um, and there's some great trainers out there and they might not be, you know, really in depth in working with mums, but they've got a pre and postnatal qualification. They, they, they will send you to a women's health physio and they'll know that the women's health physio will then guide them in the exercise that they should be doing with you afterwards. And that's okay too. We're not all specialists, but we all need to have a good general knowledge in working with mums. Mm. Um, so if your trainer sent, asks you if you've seen a women's health physio, you know, if you haven't guides you to where to find one, do they have a women's health physio that's a partner of theirs where they'll send you there and then they'll get information back. Um, and then ask about a qualification because we don't talk about it a lot in the industry, but at the end of the day, if your trainer is training um, a pregnant or postnatal mum without a pre and postnatal accreditation, if something was to happen, um, their insurance wouldn't cover them because they will have ticked a box that says, I'm qualified to deliver the services that I'm delivering. Um, and if you've not ticked that box, I mean, if you've not got that accreditation, then yeah. your insurance wouldn't be covered. So as a mum, you could ask what, what pre and postnatal accreditation do you hold? Um, and if you're stuck with not understanding what is valid and what's not, then, you know, for a mum, you can go to, you know, in Australia, go to Fitness Australia, look at the accreditations that are there in, in New Zealand, go to the Exercise New Zealand or the REPS website and look at the courses that sit on those websites because at least they've had, they've been through a vetting process with, mm. you know, our governing bodies. So um, to summarise that, you know, what's on their pre-exercise questionnaire? Do they send you to a women's health physio? Do they hold a pre and personal accreditation? That's it. And it's, I suppose it's knowing where to find these trainers as well, because there are so many people who say, yes, I can help you. Yep. Or I can help you strengthen your core, which I'll come to in a moment. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's a whole, whole podcast in itself, I think. But, um, I've lost my train of thought. So how do we, yeah, oh, yeah. How do you find those, um, those trainers so do you have a directory of people who have trained who have become accredited with you yeah so well yeah so what we i mean i'm my goal is to build the biggest website of mum focused fitness trainers across australia and new zealand so wow. at the moment if a mum was to go to the body beyond baby website um there's 24 trainers across australia and new zealand um that are all accredited they're all accredited in safe return to exercise some of them hold yeah other courses and there's some other great courses out there. So I'm, I very much sit in the, the neutral scope. Like I have a course, yep. but I love and respect everything that everyone else is doing out there. Girls Gone Strong, Jenny Burrell, Claire, like all of those people um, have got some great courses. Um, so for me, what I can guarantee is if someone's to come to the Body Beyond Baby website, um, all of those trainers on there have hold safe return to exercise. They hold the correct insurance. They, they're partnered with a women's health physio and they're um, accredited or associated with their governing body so again exercise new zealand or fitness australia um, outside of that at the moment there's not a big place so that's why i think my mission in the world is is that i want all the people that are doing that on that website um, and what sits behind that website is a whole heap of education for personal trainers that is happening on a monthly monthly basis so they're continuing to learn in both the business space and the education space so that mums can go these people know um, I know that these people are continually upskilling and, and they're going to look after me. Um, outside yeah, yeah. of that, there's not a, I'm under, I don't know what Exercise New Zealand does, whether it's listed on their website at the moment. Oh, um, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, so there's not really a big directory. I do know and I can say that if, if a woman went to the Body Beyond Baby website and there wasn't a trainer on there, I do have um, a list of the trainers that have done safe return to exercise at a minimum. And I, we have a, a Facebook group. And we would go out to that group and say, have you been practicing best practice? Because I also know some trainers will tick off a course and then they, they've ticked it off and that's great. Yeah. But before I refer to someone, I want to know what course, like have they done safe return to exercise or one of the other credible courses and are they working with a women's health physio? Um, so at the moment, to be completely honest, aside from the Body Beyond Baby website, I yeah. don't know of a directory. Um, yeah. So I think it, it is really asking individual trainers what accreditation they've got. Um, yeah. 
And then if there's trainers out there listening to this and you want to be part of that, the, the, the body beyond baby team and be on that, um, then I'm, you know, we, we, we open our doors at certain parts of the year to take, take new members in. Yeah. And yeah. I suppose at the moment things have changed a little bit with COVID, but there'll be face to face and online courses <clears throat> coming up shortly, I guess. As in um, for body beyond baby. For the safe, yeah, the first yeah. safe return to exercise virtual course. So we've moved it all into a virtual space. So it's mm-hmm. live virtual. Um, starts on the seventh of May. So if there's so trainers, there are any trainers, yeah, 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 yes, yeah. Um, but for the mums themselves, just ask those vetting questions because um, mm-hmm. there's not really one a one stop shop aside from the Body Beyond Baby website that you can find the people that you're looking for. Yeah, and yeah. just reiterating that there are other yeah there are other people. So whether they mention yours or um, what is her name? Um, so the, the key the courses I would strong. say Girls name? Gone Strong is all online. Um, yep. So Molly Galbraith. Um, and, and then, then, then also the Jenny, Jenny, Burrell. Burrell, Jenny Burrell's course. Yeah. Um, which Claire, which, yeah. Claire runs in Australia. Yeah. So any yeah, of those in continents, New Zealand, I know have a list of people who do their courses as well. Yeah. Which is a good starting yeah, yeah, point. Yeah. Absolutely. Fabulous. Um, yes. And now, there are women who obviously don't go to a gym and do their own thing at home. Mm-hmm. And there is a, a, misconception, a misconception about core exercises. So during pregnancy, obviously everything stretches or your abdominal muscles stretch to make room for the baby and you can get a diastasis, which is normal. Yep. Um, and then getting everything to shrink back there's that word again (laughs) shrinking again and regaining that strength a lot of women will go back to especially women who are just working out at home and don't know the difference Mm. can go back to um your sit-ups your crunches your bicycles your planks your uh, russian twists all all of that and more um what what can you say to those women about those traditional core exercises and are they are they any good or are they going to hurt more than help so i think um the biggest thing to bring to the front of mind is no exercise is a bad exercise it just might not be the best exercise to be doing right now so we're not going to ride off sit-ups and we're not going to ride off bicycles and we're not going to ride off all those exercises but what i would want to do first is to ask a woman why she wants to do those exercises. So mm. traditionally they're the exercises that are going to make your tummy, like your tummy muscles burn, which makes you feel like you're working, which makes you feel like you're either getting stronger or you're changing your aesthetics. So that's probably the two reasons women are d- driven to do your sit-ups or any abdominal exercise after having your baby. It's either yeah. an aesthetic goal or it's a strength goal. Yeah. So just in order, in terms of anatomy, we have four layers of abdominal muscles. Um, we've got rectus abdominis down the front, which are like your six pack muscles. Then you've got your external obliques under that. Then you have your internal obliques. And then you have, I don't know if you guys can hear that <laughs> screaming, but I'm working from home at the moment and clearly there's a child downstairs <laughs> having a little meltdown. So hopefully it's going to stop. So I do apologize. Bless. Hopefully, <laughs> potentially your mums um, listening. Um, yeah, so then you have your transverse abdominis, which is your innermost layer. And that's the layer that keeps your, I guess that it integrates with your pelvic floor, with your multifidus, with your, um, and keeps you nice and strong. It's also, if you're thinking from an aesthetic perspective, it's the layer that's going to bring your tummy back in. Mm. Um, so we can talk in terms of strength and we can talk in terms of aesthetics. So when you're doing all of your sit-ups and your crunches and your twisting, what you're traditionally working is your rectus and your obliques. Now, if your transverse abdominis cannot cope with the level of, um, let's call it intra-abdominal pressure or pressure that you're creating, it actually just pushes into uh, the weakest part, the weakest link. So the weakest link could be someone with abdominal separation. So down the linear alba, which is where the separation occurs. If we're doing sit-ups and your tummy is, you've got a weaker transverse abdominis, so your innermost Mm -hmm. layer, and we're creating pressure and you might push out into um, the linear elbow, which will create some kind of peak or some kind of dome. So it could put somebody at risk of increasing abdominal separation. It could also, women are at higher risk of an umbilical hernia. So it could increase the risk of a hernia at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just basically that shows us that you know, that exercise is potentially too hard for her transverse abdominis, which we'd say is her weakest link. 
um, or for her for the linear alveol, which is where the separation may have occurred. The other place that um, any intra-abdominal pressure would come out would be pelvic floor. So if you've got a weaker pelvic floor and you're doing higher level abdominal exercises, even if you don't get that peak, even if you don't have any abdominal separation, um, you could be putting that downward pressure on a pelvic floor that can't cope. Did that yeah. answer the question? I got a little it bit did. distracted by the children. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it did. I'm um, just thinking um, with the pelvic floor, even passing wind could be a sign of weakness, not just passing urine. Yeah, so you, symptoms of a weaker pelvic floor could be things like um, not being able to hold in, in wind. It could be... Um, stress incontinence it could be so stress incontinence being you do like a sit up or you run or you jump or you cough or you sneeze and you leak um versus urge incontinence where you've got to go to the toilet right now um any heaviness heavy feeling anything like that could be a weaker weaker pelvic floor and if you feel like you're doing a traditional abdominal exercises and you're kind of bearing down um then that you know could be a sign of a, a weaker pelvic floor as well yeah perfect yes that answers that answers that because i know I know from when I first started doing boot camps and someone would do a sit up and you'd hear a little boop and everyone would go and it's, it might be a bit comical or a bit embarrassing, but yep. it's something that we should maybe look at and look at whether the sit ups should be. Yeah. Yeah. Quiet. I mean, it's, it's sit ups is an interesting one because um, I did, uh, did look at some research a little while ago now, but they used a device where they, tested the intra, intra the, the pressure in the pelvic floor and the pelvic floor and the vagina on okay. with sit-ups with a with squats with a downward dog i was doing a presentation for a yoga studio um and the, it actual actually tested that there was a higher amount of pressure in a downward dog than there was in a sit-up so sit-ups wow. have a bad name um and i i actually think a sit-up is just a lazy trainer's exercise to be completely honest unless you've got a specifically aesthetic goal like are you a bodybuilder are you a figure competitor and you want to build up those six pattern muscles but i kind of feel like they're a bit of a lazy exercise um they're not necessarily done particularly well a lot of people will wrench their head up they'll like they'll put their you back know, yeah absolutely they're lying on the ground so the you know the rest of the body doesn't need to work in order to support we're just kind of going up and down um i've lost my train of thought but, oh yeah, that's right. But, um, you know, someone doing a heavy back squat or doing a downward dog for a long, long time that's pelvic floor isn't coping could be as detrimental, if not more to a, a weaker pelvic floor than a traditional sit up. So it's, it's mm. interesting the exercises that have got a bad name. Um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know. Sit ups is the last resort in my camp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For more I reasons. Tend than, to avoid them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just think there's more worthwhile exercises that we could be doing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good that you mentioned things like the squats and because everything, in my view, pretty much everything is a core exercise. You're using your core to stabilize, you're using your core to balance Absolutely. and doing something like a squat or a lunge and managing and coordinating that pressure and the breath and everything together is going to get a better result than just lying on the floor doing a bunch of setups. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, having said that, we do want you to lie on the floor to learn how to do your pelvic floor and your TA because it's the path of least resistance. <laughs> and once yes. you get it right there, then you can take it into the other exercises. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. We want... We want your breathing to work together. We want your pelvic floor to work together. We want your TA to work together. Um, we do want you to learn it in an easy position, but then we want you to take it into life because we don't get around lying on our back and we don't get around, you know, just doing pelvic floor lying down or no, that don't. kind of thing. Um, so I think I'm going to draw the line there because we can just keep talking for hours and we're coming up to an hour yep. nearly already. Um, going back to yeah, the... That's cool. The no more pre-baby body movement mm. that you started. Um, can people still post their own pictures and do that? Use that hashtag? Are you still looking? Yeah, absolutely. Like it's it's a it's not ending. Um, it's taken a, it's, it's one of these things, campaigns go up and down and then you choose whether you're going to revive them again. Um, the general consensus is that we want to revive, like not revive, but you know 
do another campaign this year. So it'll be October, kind of October, November again yep. this year as we come into um, Australia, New Zealand summer. Um, absolutely. You can go look up the hashtags. If you search the hashtag, mostly on Instagram, but probably on Facebook as well. So no more pre-baby body was the hashtag. Um, and then keep an eye out for what we do with it next. So we're, we're in talks and different people are like, some people are saying we, we don't think we should um, be when be wearing little clothes because when we don't wear um, the clothes then it becomes about the body. Other people sit in the camp of um, we need to see bodies, more bodies in order to think more bodies are like naked bodies are normal, no matter what their shape and size. So yeah. there's a different kind of where we're kind of sitting in the background going, what, what is the, the ongoing message and it where do we want to so go with different it, ways, can't it? It could. Yeah. So it'd be interesting if people listen and they've got ideas, I'd be more than happy for them to get in, in touch and, or post yeah. their own picture or, you know, whatever it may be. And when we do repost, so if people do want to be brave and do their no more pre baby body, then, absolutely do that and you don't have to get in your underwear to do it <laughs> <laughs> whatever you feel comfortable in. whatever you feel comfortable in that's absolutely. it you do you you do you yes. yes perfect so um i like to finish off every podcast with kind of a summary so yep. because we've covered quite a lot mm -hmm. what is if you could summarize what we've talked about in a couple of sentences what yep. would you say to the women listening what would I say? Okay. So I think because we touched on, we touched on, you know, the body image side of things and we touched on the education side of things. So what I would encourage every woman, every mum to do is understand that both from a physical um, and an aesthetic and an emotional perspective that her pregnancy journey, her post baby um, postnatal journey is different to everybody else's and every woman's pregnancy you know if you go on to have sub subsequent pregnancies that's different too so just to mm. to understand that this is a personal journey there is no right or wrong um to to educate yourself because you as a woman have a responsibility to become educated um as much as we as personal trainers want to educate you and look after you we definitely want women to take that responsibility and have the autonomy to make sure they're being looked after so um in summary it's your journey get educated um, and just, yeah, take every day as it comes. There's no pressure physically or aesthetically to be anything right now. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, that summarizes it quite well because that's it. We're here to help, but at the end of the day, it's your body, it's your journey. Yep. And to empower women to take control and to understand their own body and their own situation is the most powerful thing that we can do for ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Fantastic. Well, that brings us to the end. Oh, I think this is my longest podcast. Yes. And I could easily oh, wow. for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> easily. Cool. So I think we'll have to have you back for talking about other things. Sounds good. Um, until then, thank you very much, Jen, for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.